Hello everybody and welcome back to another Vintage Thursday. So, um, so we're now just into May and the time for drilling fodder beet is rapidly approaching. Um, so as with other years, I'm going to use a 35, so we're going to briefly um, give it like a spring, quick spring service. So we're going to grease everything round. Uh, we're going to change the oil in the oil bath air filter and you can also see the sediment bowl on the fuel system has got some sediment in it so we'll clean that out it's just a glass bowl just get all that mankiness out um, it's coming close to due for an oil change um, but it's not quite there yet so that'll be a you know later in the summer job and also the most important thing for drilling beet we are going to put row crops on and set our track width to uh, to the required width for the, the beet drill um, and also uh, another little job we want to try and get done if we can we need to change need to put a new doughty coupler on here um, because this i had to use this coupler this trailer pipe adapter on the 550 to get the 30 drill to work um, and when i unscrewed it from here the rubber o-ring on the back of the doughty coupler uh, fell off basically so i've got a new one um, that was a problem that uh, that rubber ring in there disappeared um, so I've had to put that back on when I wanted to use the subsoiler a couple of weeks back so hopefully if we change a couple in we can take that off um, and that can then stay with the 550 because it's more likely to get used there than it is on here and then we're not going to leak so um, we're in the evening now we're not going to get it all done tonight because it's going to get dark in a minute but we'll make a start so first thing we'll do is the easy stuff uh, the fuel bowl and that. So we'll start with the fuel bowl first and um, hopefully it should be a fairly simple little thing. So what we've got up in somewhere, the oh, other side is a fuel tap so we'll go turn off. Okay so fuel is now off all we've got to do is undo the little screw at the bottom of the bracket, take the bowl away Dip it into a bucket, and there we can see all of our sediment and dirt that's been caught before it even gets to the filter. So we'll just give it a wipe out, get the worst of it out. go much tidier job now is that somewhere safe so there's no ring and a gauze filter up inside he actually looks pretty clean but we'll give him a give him a rinse out nothing much in that one So the gauze has got a square hole that corresponds to a hole up in the top. So we've got to make sure we line that up. And then the O-ring. And clamp our bowl back in. Nice and simple. A little bit of tension on the screw. Get an airtight seal and we'll turn the fuel back on. Okay, so the fuel is on now. All we've got to do now is go to the other side of the tractor again, open the bleed screw on the top of the filter. Um, it may bleed, it may bleed through by gravity, or we may have to pump it. Uh, we'll see. So the bleed screw is open. There we go. Just give it a little pump. caught just wrong on the cam we're not getting any movement on the 
fuel pump. Just crack open the bowl. That should let some air out and fill it up. There we go. There we go. Get to the top and then we'll shut him up again. Okay, so this is the bleed screw that we've slackened off. We're doing back up. so we can check for leaks easily if it starts so we'll go for a start now if it starts and runs that's good if it stops and if it stop if it starts runs and then cuts out I um, you know we've got air in the system and we're gonna have to bleed it so we'll see what happens If we had air in the system, it would have it would have stopped by now. So we'll call that bit done. Next job, and we'll drop the oil out of here. So what we're going to do is unscrew this clamp, and then it will drop down. It won't leak any oil because it's all contained in the bowl that we're dropping down. Okay, so <clears throat> here's our oil. It, you can, probably can't see, but it does still look clean. If I pour it into the bucket, um, it does look clean. But once you see into the bottom, look at all the dirt and the all the dirt, all the dirt and the dust just sticks into the bottom. So we'll go and give that a good, good clean out now. So there we go, nice and clean and shiny now. All that horrible, filthy, kind of yellow gunge is gone. So what we've got to do is just put the oil level back up. So written inside, it says engine type 3A152, exact oil level. And when it says it again, it does say it here. I mean, probably can't read it very well. But basically the oil level is pointing to this ridge in the bowl so if we fill it up to there which is here inside and outside and that's it just a bit of engine oil up to the line So there we go, filled level, and then straight back on, it's as easy as that. So you can see, hopefully you can see, we've got right in, got oil level right in, and that's got to go outside just because it makes it look pretty. Not for any reason other than that. Just because I'm a bit weird like that. But you probably already knew that anyway. Just finger tight is plenty. There we go, he is done. Right, so that's the two simple basic service jobs done. I think what we'll have a go at next is see if we can change this coupler over. Um, once that's done, we've got to grease, grease all the axle and all the pivots, um, and then we will change the track width. I think we'll grease last, because if we grease now, um, we're gonna be getting grease points. The grease points are here, um, down on the spindles. Um, I did wash this after we went subsoiling, 
so there's no grease hanging about in the minute but if I grease it now and then we move the axles out we're going to get covered so we'll grease it fine so we'll grease it as the last thing so what I think we'll do quickly before it gets dark have a go and swapping out this coupler okay so first thing we will just oh dear take off the adapter if we can which we can there we go so hopefully this can now go and live on the 550 and here you can hopefully see the problem that in there is where the rubber rubber seal should be uh, like that one and without this when you lift anything up on the linkage uh, it leaks so that's where it's got to go it's just held on by there's a little bracket held on by a like a half nut backing it up and that is to fit in for the oil pipe so let's hope it comes undone and nothing breaks it's not looking lightly oh, we're away we're away So I've got to reuse this back nut because I don't have a new one. So hopefully we don't damage it on the way off. Ooh. The spanner's not quite the right size. No. Right, it's time to get brutal now. There's just a rusty bit on there that wasn't wasn't covered by the nut or the nut. But hopefully the nut's good. Hopefully this nut is okay. So here we have old and new side by side. And um, you can see it's all mangled up. Seal is gone. So hopefully this will cure our leaking issues. Look at that. Sliding on like a like a 60 year old nut. Make sure it all lines up. So we're not going to use stilts on our shiny new one. Tighten up the union. And the, fi and the final finishing touch. Nice dust cap. And just a little tweak with the old Ferguson spanner. To keep him tight. And there he goes. So pleased to get that done. That's been wanting doing for a little while actually. That um, <coughs> this is, this has been on there stopping it leaking for a number of years. So it's time that got sorted out. That's another another little job ticked off the list. 
Um, so we're losing daylight now. I think we're going to pack up for this evening. Uh, come back tomorrow. Put our, put our row crop wheels on, set our front axle out, and then we'll be all set for a day's drilling. Right, so we are back for the second part of getting the 35 ready. Um, so we did last night, you saw us. Um, so what you've just seen was last night, we are now back to the next day. And we were going to go spray in the spring wheat this morning, but um, you might see the trees blowing, it's just too windy. So we're going to get on, get the 35 ready for go beat drilling. Because um, Dad is, as we speak, or as we record this, he is finishing off power harrowing for the second time. Um, and it's going, it's getting a seed bed now, it's good, good enough. So I'm uh, going to continue getting ready. So this video, the rest of this video will be swap the wheels, get the drill, get the drill on and ready to go. Um, but before we get to swap the wheels, there's just something I want to show you um, because I know I'm going to get comments. So I'm going to show you why we're going to do what we're going to do. Okay, so here we are. We are 35 is nose to nose with the 550. Um, so when we bought the 550, when we did the first introductory video to it, um, we had a comment that said, will you be beat drilling next year with the 550? Um, and, you know, I said, maybe, we'll see what happens, but we're not. We're going for the 35. Um, simple reason is, um, if you remember last year, we had to put our wheels way out, the track width as wide as it would go near enough. Um, sort the back wheels for row crops that are already set to width. Um, it's just easier to make the 35 wide track than the 550. So the back wheels would be exactly the same because we're going to have to swap them off, put on our row crops, so there's no issues there. Um, the, ease, the thing with the 35, um, to put the axle out to its full width, what we do, obviously jack it up. Um, pull these bolts out, slide the axle across, put the bolts back in, and then we reverse the wheel to make it even wider. And then the wheels, and then the wheels are running in line. Um, so the, the benefit of the 35 axle system, um, or any really, any basically any Coventry built um, swept axle tractor is the same from the T20 right through to the to the kind of the early 135s. Um, you do not have to adjust the track rod as you slide it out. It keeps your track set in the same. Um, the 550 is very different. Um, it is full hydrostatic steering, so there is no mechanical link between the steering wheel and the cab and the wheels. It is all just done by oil. So in order to widen the track width on the 550, we would have to undo the bolts, uh, undo the bolts on the axle, just the same to slide it out. But also, we need to move the track rods out from this bar that crosses in front of the radiator across to both sides of the top of the kingpins. Now in here doesn't look like it's going to come out in a hurry and um, that could be an awful lot of work and looking at this now that paint that looks a bit burnt off somebody may well have heated this in the past to try and adjust it. So that is the reason we're sticking with old technology. I just don't I just don't fancy getting into that axle. That could be a lot of work in there. And I know for a fact to swap this, put this whole front axle out, it's like 10 minutes work to do the whole thing. So that's why. So so that's why. So there we are, we've explained it now. Um, so I know I'm gonna get a comment as to why do we do it. So if I explain it, you'll you'll all know. But equally I know, even though I spent time to explain it. Just somebody is still going to ask in the comments because it proves they don't watch everything. Right, so let's get on. Let's go and put our wheels out.
So there we go, that is half done, like I said. So you, so you just saw how easy it was. Two bolts, reverse the wheel. Um, if you were doing the 550, I think we'd still be struggling to get, get things undone, never mind be halfway there. So, I'll just get the other side done. And now we can hook onto the drill, which is here, greased around, ready to go. Um, I saved, I didn't put you through watching all the grease in because, you know, it's not exactly exciting. So anyway, right, I'll be back in a minute when we're hitching on. Okay, so here we are, all set out nice and wide. Um, so you watch us through that side, time lapse. Um, you saw how easy and quick it was, like I was saying, um, so much different to the, the 550. Um, when we come to do this side, it was actually a bit more tricky. Um, last year when we, so last year when we set out wide, um, this bolt that runs down through the tie rod was actually seized in, and we had to heat it up last year. I thought, well, this time would be all right because um, you know it won't be stuck. But it was stuck again, so you can see we've greased them up this time. So hopefully, um, so this side did take a little bit longer, but there we are. And hopefully next year, now it's got some grease on that, it should come out nice and easy. So right, tractor is finished, ready to go. Um, so what we've got to do is we've got to put an individual box onto each one of these row units. So get those out now, we will put the seed belts in the boxes and get hitched on, put the boxes on, uh, and then we're going to be ready to go. Right, so time for cedar boxes. So we've got six individual cedar units um, and six belts. So we always take the belts out over winter. And for some reason, we always turn the belts inside out to store them. Don't really know why. It's just the way when we bought some new belts, they came turned inside out. So we've always done the same. So just take the cover plate off quick check make sure everything turns over winter you know so everything still turns after it's winter storage so this one goes this way and drives the belt which loops around here and this one turns opposite way to make sure only one seed ever drops into the groove and we'll demonstrate in a minute so we'll turn our belt in the right way around Okay, so it's tensioned by this spring here with a little pulley wheel. And then when the box is filled with seed, the seed comes through this gap at the bottom. Obviously the plate is on. And then a seed will drop into each hole in the belt. And this wheel turns backwards to the belt rotation to make sure there's only ever one seed in each hole and then the seed drops through here into the soil. So we we'll put the cover back on. Do the other five.
So there we go, all fitted up, all ready to go. All we've got to do now is just add seed and put a bit of tension on the dry felts, but we don't do that until we're actually ready to go. So now you hopefully you can see why we went to the bother of changing the track setting and the narrow wheels. So now we are not running on anything that's going to receive a seed. So we're only running on ground that's not going to get drilled. So the tractor wheels are running up the center line, or not the center, but a cedar unit is not following a wheel, is what I'm trying to say. So there we go. Um, hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, next time we will be using it, we will go drilling. So don't forget to sub subscribe so you can uh, follow our little journey. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll see you next time.